pick Timbers or Bristleback coming out from the Undying side. So we'll have to see what Tomato decides to rely on. But okay, yeah, we're just gonna see the Ursa. The old standby. The class proves that you really can sort of kick up. They are Div two going Div one this season, so that would be a fantastic precedent to set. Bushwhack into overwhelming odds into maybe a right click or two and. Tomato will have to be at least a little bit careful of his positioning until more region gets delivered as Saberlight able to find a kill into Pandego up in the top lane. Yuma can't really do a lot to defend his teammate. Pandego did throw down that Maledict, but it's not going to be enough to really get any return kills as Undying will draw first blood here in game one. And this is not really going to be a fun fight, uh, fun time for him. And Papa Tutti and top should get in the early point there in the X-Sword as top lane. Pandego, yeah, trapped up again. Same play, almost the same position as well. As they trap him up inside the shards, Saberlight is there, the tag team comes through, and initiation. Can Brile really maybe lead this one off with maybe a trap play? Go. There it is, trap comes in, Moon Meander charges forward, they're gonna get hit up though by that disarm from the Deafening Blast, but Dupu's actually in there as well with the Fortune's End, Pop 2 he doesn't have any real mana to work with here, and he's gonna get trapped up in the shards, looking to turn on the Moon Meander though, but I don't think he actually has the damage, the Snowball's gonna come through just to sort of be sure, and Moon, he will live, Brile gets the kill onto Pop 2 and... It got a little dicey there, but that's still some solid execution from Undying to get the that pick up. Blank and... Okay. Mm, Moon. This is a little bit of an awkward one. Zabai Lama's going to come in, but the duel actually won't come through just yet. That Snowball will buy some time, but he's still trapped. Duel will come through, and the Tusk should go down. Sunstrike even being deployed. Yuma gets the kill. Divai Lama gets the damage. You get Papa Tutti a bit of an assist there. And really, that one goes pretty spectacularly. The only downside is the fact that Saberlight, uh, while that was going oh, on, did take the tower. Oh god, did take the tower up top. But Brile is now in some trouble. Tornado's locking him in. Brile now trapped up inside of the ice wall, and they're actually going to get him as well. And these are heavy rotations coming in from the D2 Huster side, but I don't think they should. But Moon's going in. Saberlight, Saberlight though, in. they've got the roar. Okay. If Saberlight's here, maybe they can get this done. But Pandago and Frugos are coming in, trying to defend their teammate. Papa Tutti is still going to go down though. So. Dubu will find the kill. That snowball really didn't have anywhere to go, but Pandego, oh, he's still slowed up by the boar. And yep. he should be going down here. That's a nice play in with the overwhelming odds from the LC, but it's not going to be enough to matter. So Saberlight gets himself the kill, and that one, to be honest, I didn't think they were going to be able to get that. But with Saberlight rotating in, they've got the lockdown and the damage, and they are going to be able to swing that one their way. Now they're taking the tier 1 tower mid as well. And if they can focus down this Papa Tootie and on both top and mid... Uh, Hustlers sort of lose a little bit of safe access to that north side jungle area, and you know, we can see right Ooh, now Undying are pushing their way forward. Frogos is going to get jumped in on. Frogos, rather, excuse me, as he gets hit up, and Dubu is able to bring him down. For the hero that D2 Hustlers need to place up versus this Beastmaster, and they've got a lot of units here. Okay. Chrono deployed, but they didn't get the dual win. They could still find the kill, though. Moon will go down, but Saberlight but turns Papa around Tootie. with the roar, and yeah, Papa Tootie's just dead. Brow comes into the fight. Yuma's gonna look to TP out as well. Can he get away? Yes, he can, but uh, his teammates are still He's in trouble. It. Oh, okay, yeah, he might just die to the Maledict here. Oh, mm. perfect. If the refraction charge lasts out, oh, okay, he's going to be fine. Oh, Yuma though. Okay, he wants back in for it. He is going to be able to get it. Bry will be taken down, so they do eventually find that kill. But the resources that needed to be committed there, they get the Maledict down into the Death Ward. They throw the Sharpshooter out, and eventually they are able to find it. But that one got a little bit dicey. It's a two for two exchange overall, and D2 Hustlers uh, do come away with more gold. But they needed a lot of their resources to find those kills. Been fine. But they're still fighting in this area. They've oh got God. another duel. All right. False promise, though, in from save. Dubu. So no duel win. But you know, can the Tusk actually keep himself alive here? The Snowball will buy him time. Meanwhile, Brile, he's back in. This is pretty much the exact same area that we saw that previous fight go down in. And the Hustlers will lose, too. Frugos dead. Pandago gone as well. So a Divai, I mean, he thought that was going to be a relatively easy one, right? You get the duel in. You got a little bit of backup. You got the Sunstrike coming in from your Invoker. So in theory, that's a quick and easy play. But... Or a tusk, and you're still working towards that blink dagger on Devi. He is just gonna oh walk into boy. everyone. Load up by the trap, able to use the press the attack to remove that, but the snowball still locks him down. That's gonna be the walrus punch to follow it up, and Brile will get the kill. So here comes Undying. They're just gonna keep on pushing forward. They've got the Aegis now to feel even more confident, and D2 Hustlers at this point in time, they're not able to take sort of those smaller engagements. Maybe when they've got the duel, the sharpshooter, the chronosphere, when they've got that sort of whole uh, smorgasbord of abilities to throw out there, they stand a better chance. But in those smaller engagements where they're just getting sort of picked off one at a time, there's just nothing for them to do. They really do need to try and regroup here and get that sort of team fight strength online as Papa Tootie and Yuma, they're eyeing up Moonmeander here, so maybe and they could really jump in. this is the only combo. 
they don't have that much damage to put inside the chronosphere so uh, they're gonna have to do something to moon here okay mm -hmm. they don't want to chrono him. oh my oh, okay, god those bashes. The bashes wow yuma i mean bash god we've seen him bash people to death before but that was like but talked about it a little bit yesterday when we saw the beastmaster again when you're radiant beastmaster you just have so much space Ooh. to work with yeah, the and duel. they go saved by the duel. That's a nice little play there. It won't get them any sort of kill, but Chrono. oh wait, maybe it will. Chrono in from Yuma. They're gonna go for False it. Can promise, the Ursa though. be saved? Where's that promise? There it is. Okay. False promise deployed. Saberlight in with the roar. They're gonna lock down the faces boy. They hit him up with the snowball as well, and Yuma is actually the one to go down. What a massive sort of reversal of fortunes there, and, and Tubu, he's just yanking his teammates out of the fire time after time. This Oracle pick has been so, so good for them so far. And they need to find the plays onto, really, just this Beastmaster. They need to find the space. They need to chrono him, really, if anyone, because he's the hero that is going to play by himself, play isolated in this top lane. And they're just taking top while they're taking this sort of crazy fight uh, mid. Opportunity, this is, is not working. good. He's trying to get away. One more hit may finish him off, but... Tornado buying a little bit of time. Cold Snap comes in as well. Tomato, he can't hit it just yet. The Bushwhack Ooh. even pulling him back, and... Papatuti lives. Now the Jewel oh, comes in. That duel. was a mistake. Okay, um... Yeah, that's a problem. Okay. Papa Tootie turns around to try and help, but he ends up getting taken down too, so neither of those plays end up having the effect that Hustlers wanted, and now Pandago, he's going to get caught out as well. How in the world does that happen? They go from free and clear, with everybody getting out, to losing three because of, honestly, a bad duel from Divine Llama. That was not a good call. To be honest, Blink Dagger also in the pipeline for this Ursa, and oh. once those items are completed, ooh, Papa Tootie, We're on the it just doesn't matter. Yeah, Papa Tutti can't save his teammate now. He's in trouble as well. Four staff, four staff should... There we go. Yeah, four staff will get him over the wall. So Papa Tutti will be fine, but another pickoff. 17 kills now, four undying in the first 17 minutes. A 10k lead, and Bryle's now got that Desolator online. So he was already a problem for pretty much all of these D2 Hustlers to survive, and now that damage output takes a rather sizable step forward, and it's also going to help him burn through this tower. Tier 2 mid's just going to get completely wiped out. Time to go for this four staff. We don't see the vessel. We don't see the Midas, and uh, and now your key hero is dying bottom, trying to finish off his blink dagger. And while he is able to get it, it really is make or break it. If they don't get anything out of this next chrono, this next set of spells, then I think Undying are just going to ride this one all the way home. And Pandago oh, in no, some they trouble. The oh staff. no! Doesn't get him over the wall. Instead, it just sort of keeps him in the middle of the fight. As Saberlight is going to be able to find the pickoff, and now Papa Tutti, he's just got to run. But they do hit him up with a trap. They're not actually going to pursue him though. They have a chance for the tier three tower, so they're just pushing the high ground. Eighteen minutes in, they are going to burn through a tier three. Or maybe not. Glyph. And it's fine. They get the glyph if they really want. Now they don't have any reason to back away. Aegis is going to expire, so they do need to be a little bit cautious. But aside from that, the duel just cuz. You need to get this Oracle ulti out of here, otherwise it doesn't matter who you initiate on. Oh, oh, they found him. Okay, Perfect. they're in onto the Oracle. Big duel for them. Yuma looking for the Chrono as well. Actually, he doesn't have it right now, so he's not going to be able to deploy it there. But well, now his teammates are in a little bit of trouble. Pandago gets taken down. Divai is going to get picked off on the backline as well. So they got the Oracle kill. They just weren't really able to turn it into much more. And... Uh, neither of those heroes have buyback and Saberlight's in with the roar. They're going to lock down Frugos, taking out that Hoodwink as well. At least the Hoodwink has buyback, but I don't know if that's going to be enough oh, as this boy. push comes back in onto the high ground. And did Yuma have to use his Chrono defensively? I, I could have sworn he had it because now this is just it. If you don't have Chrono there, if you were, you had the initiation onto the Oracle. You could have gone in on the backline, maybe get something with Ryle and Pandago's ultimate, but this is feels like it's just going to be it here in a few moments. And, I don't know, it was about, it was maybe like halfway through the cooldown when we sort of checked in on it in that fight, so, to be honest, I don't really remember him having used it before, as you said, I kind of could have sworn that he did have it, but uh, apparently not, they tried for that fight anyway, and it's impressive in the fact that they do get Dubu, that's the play that you, you sort of needed to see from them, but that's not enough, you need to take down Dubu and then actually take the fight, instead, that's the only pickoff that they get, and Undying really just sort of make their opponents pay for that one, and now they're just going to keep on kind of sieging them up. They're just going to sit in this sort of area directly outside their opponent's base and just sort of sap away every last scrap of farm so that D2 Hustlers are really just pinned back. 
And Yuma, while he was able to make a break back there, he does have his cronies. Absolutely no one on the Undying side. They don't know that these heroes have left. They don't know that they're slightly weaker on the map. And D2 Hustlers, they either have to make the risky call or they have to sit in their base and be cautious here. And Pedego, he is smoked up. He's trying to get some vision out. But at the same time, Saberlight, with how much farm he's been able to amass, I really don't know if they have enough damage to kill him without using four or five ultimates. Ooh, goodbye. Oh, he wants he in, just, but... He missed the blink, and now Pendago's dead. Oof. And that is the sort of razor-thin margin oh, for error right boy. now. Oh, oh god, Devi, not dead yet. Yuma, though. Okay, he's in with the Chrono, but where's the damage? They need it. The False Promise, though, has already come out, so Saberlight will not fall. The Roar now being deployed onto Papatuti. They do get to press the attack onto him, though, so that will remove that debuff. But Yuma, he's stuck in the middle of the fight. He will be taken down, and now Papatuti and Frugos are on the yep, run. As Brile, yeah, pushes in. GG will be called, and Undying will take Game 1 in pretty dominant fashion here. Yeah, and I can't say I'm surprised. I can't say anybody is surprised by the outcome of that match, but...